How you doing people? Robert here, aka Rob S. I have to do this video again, there were issues with the last one. I'm going to address the answers to the questions um, relating to the summary warrant application. Okay. You can refer back to the previous video relating to the questions and answers that was given in the Freedom of Information request. Answer one, it's up to the local authority to submit the application for a summary warrant to the court in conformity with the relevant legislation, namely under Schedule 8 of the local government finance review. There is nobody called local authority people, there is no man or woman called local authority or council. It's a fictitious corporate name used to escape liability. That's how simple it is. Section 1992 is relevant to the person, the legal person, the entity, the corporation, not the man or woman. That's how simple this is. This is simple people. This isn't complicated the way people out there are making it complicated. The application summary one paperwork is produced by the applicant and is submitted by the applicant to the court for consideration. Definition of applicant is person, not the man or woman. Again, nothing to do with the man or woman people. The sheriff court administration staff lay the application before the sheriff and then advise the applicant of the decision. The sheriff administration staff, that tells you they're part of a corporation, right? You don't have a contract with these people. It's all fraud and an illusion of authority of people. The sheriff is a fictitious mask, an office that these men and women hide behind to escape liability, right? And that's a fact. Again, fraud and lies. Answer two, the sheriff will consider and sign the warrant in the, their chambers with, in the relevant sheriff court building. The Sheriff Court building is a proper court. What is inside that building is administrative hearing, a corporate place of business. It's not to do with law, right? And that's a fact. There is not a court of record or a court of law. It's a fraud against the people. In the chambers, in the civil office, people like, for example, when you go to challenge the warrant for the meters to be put in the homes, they sit at the civil office and contain in a wee room just off the civil office, right? That's what they want. I don't know what they do after that, but that's what it's saying. It's a fraud. I mean, it's challenging the example they want, but it, just, it gets dropped right away, right? Three, where the local authority makes an application to the court in conformity with the relevant legislation, the sheriff must grant the sum they want authorised recovery of the sums due. That's because their system is based on presumption. In their court system, their administrative system, there's 12 presumptions on law. I'll cover this in another video to explain to what this is, people. Everything's based on a presumption and the person and the Crown copyright names, right? The summary one uh, procedure is a means of the public, such as local authority, to pursue amounts they are owed on behalf of the public. The legislation makes no requirement for a court here to be set and any challenge for the summary one being granted should it be lodged with the relevant, relevant authority directly. Right, you can't erase anywhere local authority is dead. A fictitious corporate name used to escape liability. There is no man or woman called local authority or council. Phone them up direct and ask them to speak to the man or woman called local authority or council and they'll tell you there is nobody by right now. So that tells you the fraud, right? Council tax may be levied and collected in the terms of 1997, section 97 of the Local Government Finance Act 1992. Schedule 8 of the 1992 provides for enforcement action in relation to non-payment of council tax, right? These two sections are relevant to the person, no the man or woman. Everything in acts and statutes are relevant to persons, no men and women. And it's the law of commerce, contract law people. They're private corporations registered and done in Bradstreet. They are not sovereign, uh, sovereign people working for the people, right? Four. As a matter for the local authority, which paperwork it supplies to the debtor, meaning that they choose what paperwork they use to commit a major fraud, malfeasance in public office, misrepresentation, right, wasn't conduct to deceive and defraud you for your monies, right? Now, definition of debtor, person, not man or woman, person, right? Five, once the summary warrant has been issued by the local authority, may serve a charge for payment. A charge for payment will be served by sheriff officers and messengers at arms. For further information regarding charge for payments, contact should be made with the role, uh, relevant local authority. Again, escape liability. The, course, the Scottish Court Services try to escape liability. Again, there is no man or woman called Scottish Court Service. It's all a fraud, people. They're using fictitious language and legalese to deceive and defraud. 
Number six, the Sheriff Court does not administer earning arrestment for council tax unless it is part of a conjoined arrestment order. Generally, the, an earnings arrestment should, would be dealt with by a solicitor, debt recovery firm or sheriff officers on behalf of the creditor. Well, a council, a local authority, can't be a creditor because it's dead. It's just a soulless legal fiction that has no right of mind to contract and no man or woman can be a contract or say a debt's on its behalf or it would be total fraud, right? Seven, the purpose of the Scottish Court and Tribunal Service is supporting ju uh, justice which we do by providing people, buildings and services needed to support the judiciary, the courts and the tribunals and the Office of Public Guardian. The Scottish Court Service function is to administ administrate and has no relevance with the functions of sheriff officers and how they perform their work. So what they're saying is they're independent for the court. The court doesn't get involved in this. These people act in capacity as sheriff officers. Again, there is no man or woman called sheriff officers. There's men and women acting uh, capacity who sometimes act as sheriff officers. Again, you have to get the language right, people, right? Eight, there is no requirement for the documents to be put in the old caps. The format of any document served on the dare by a sheriff officer is not something which the court, Scottish Court Services can advise on. Again, these are escape liability using fictitious names, fictitious offices especially corporate names. There, again, is a person. Sheriff officer is a man or woman acting in capacity with a fictitious office hiding behind a mask, right? The Scottish Court Service, the entity known as Scottish Court Services, escape liability. People are passing on their name because they want nothing to do with it. Number nine, the legislation states that the application by the authority must be accompanied by a certificate from the, them con containing such particulars as it may be prescribed. It is up to the local authority to do evidence for the satisfaction of the sheriff for the summary warrant to be granted. It's all rigged. The game is rigged, people. It's all. Every part of this legal system is against the sovereign people, no matter what it is. There is no remedy. You have to destroy the system and remove all these government bodies, right? Because it's a fraud. Number 10. Once the sheriff has granted the summary warrant authorised recovery of the sums due, the paperwork is thereafter returned to the relevant local authority. Again, they can't return it to a local authority. They can return it to men and women acting capacity as uh, officers, right, within that authority. Again, local authority is a dead fictitious name used to escape liability. And the reason they're sending all that paperwork in back is to hide the fraud. I've already verified in the last video that a man contacted the sheriff uh, clerk in Glasgow Sheriff Court and it was stated clearly there was no record of a summary warrant within that building. He had to contact the dead legal entity, corporate name known as Glasgow City Council or whatever council is relevant, right? This is all a big fraud, people. These people have to wake up and smell the coffee. You have to listen to myself and anti-corruption Scotland because we're giving you the right information for the right reason. I've been doing this for just under 12 and a half years. I've been fighting with this system for a long, long time and I know how this system works, people. And I am one of the people that know how this system works with the fictitious language, the legalese. They're actually come in identity theft because they're using two formats with crown copyright names to steal your name, right? And that's a fact. And the sooner you comprehend and understand what's happening here, then change will happen. If you sit back and keep doing what you're doing, ignoring, remember, acquiescence, silence is consent. When you don't challenge nothing or rebut it, it stands in their law or any law, right? It has to be challenged and rebutted. Please share this video far and wide, people. Get this information out there so people know, comprehend and understand what's being done against the sovereign man, sovereign woman, sovereign son and daughter, okay? You people take care, be safe. The next video will be an eye-opener, right? When I put this video up, I'll probably have to do it in two parts. But this will really waken you up, people, because you're going to see how deep this fraud really goes, and it can be verified by myself under a charge of perjury in any court jurisdiction in the lands of Scotland, England, England, or Wales, court of session, the Supreme Court, and I'm the only one that says that. Take care, people. Be safe. And again, I'll speak soon. And thank you for coming to TikTok.